Welcome. In this video, we will present the Poisson multi Bernoulli mixture conjugate prior, which is based on using a different birth model. In the MBM conjugate prior, we had a multi Bernoulli birth, and now we use a Poisson point process birth. We can start with giving a motivation for why we change the birth model. In an MBM filter, a multi Bernoulli birth model is used, and this means that in the prediction of the MBM density, we add birth Bernoulli components to each multi Bernoulli in the mixture. Each such birth Bernoulli has a probability of birth, so a probability that there is an actual object there. And since the birth probability typically is less than one, we also have a non zero probability that there is not an object there. If an object actually appeared and was detected, then in the update, this detection can be associated to the birth component and we can start to track this object. So note that we add birth components regardless of whether or not there is any detection close to the birth component. So why do we do this? Why add birth components before we know if there are any detections? And perhaps an even better question is, if the addition of new Bernoulli components corresponding to new potential objects could be measurement driven. In other words, we only add new Bernoullis if there is a detection that appears to be from a newly appeared object. And the answer is that the addition of new Bernoullis can be measurement driven if we use a Poisson point process birth model instead of a multi Bernoulli birth model. If we have a Poisson point process birth, then the Poisson multi Bernoulli mixture density, denoted PMBM, is multi object conjugate prior to the standard point object transition density and measurement model. So in other words, if we have a PMBM density at time k minus one, the predicted density is PMBM, and the posterior at time k is also a PMBM density. Just like we did for the MBM density, we can have a look at how the PMBM model is useful for MOT, beyond the fact that the density is multi-object conjugate. And this has to do with some of the multi-object tracking uncertainties. Specifically, that we don't know if there are any objects in the surveillance area, or how many there are, and if there are objects in the surveillance area, their states are unknown. And lastly, we have the unknown data association. So regarding the number of objects, in the PMBM model, we have two things. For detected objects, we have the Bernoulli existence probabilities, and then we also have so-called undetected objects, which are represented by a Poisson point process intensity. On the next slide, we will explain what these undetected objects are. The Bernoulli existence probabilities tell us how certain we are about the different potential objects, and the undetected intensity tells us about the possibility for objects in the surveillance area that we have not detected. In other words, objects that are undetected. And from these two, we can get the object cardinality probability mass function. The unknown states of the objects are captured by the Bernoulli state densities for objects that have been detected and the Poisson point process intensity for the undetected objects. And lastly, the multi Bernoulli mixture captures different data association sequences. So each multi Bernoulli mixture component corresponds to a data association sequence and the mixture weights tell us about the estimated probability of this data association sequence. So to conclude, just like the multi Bernoulli mixture model, the Poisson multi Bernoulli mixture model is not only useful because of its conjugacy, but also because it nicely captures the relevant uncertainties. So now we need to explain with some more detail exactly what is meant by detected objects and undetected objects. In the Poisson multi Bernoulli mixture model, the set of objects denoted boldface X is a union of two disjoint sets. The set of detected objects denoted boldface X with a super index D and the set of undetected objects denoted by boldface X with a super index U. The set of detected objects that's the objects that the sensor or sensors have detected at least once. And the set of undetected objects is the set of objects that have never been detected. And this refers to all time steps. So it's not just the objects that were misdetected in the last time step. 
Something you might wonder at this point is, if we are doing tracking based on detections, how could we possibly track undetected objects? And indeed, at first glance, it can seem like a very counterintuitive idea to divide the set of objects into two disjoint sets, the set of detected objects and the set of undetected objects. However, we are not explicitly tracking the undetected objects. Instead, we have a representation of their possible existence. So for example, if we consider an autonomous car, we can have a scenario where a large truck is blocking part of the view, and then it is possible that some object is located in the occluded area behind the truck. Actually, the possibility of undetected objects is included in many tracking algorithms. For example, in a multi-Bernoulli mixture filter, the Bernoullis represent possible objects. So therefore, any Bernoulli that we have never associated a detection to represents a possible undetected object. And the difference is that in the Poisson multi-Bernoulli mixture model, the possibility of undetected objects is made more explicit. And we can illustrate the usefulness of this undetected model with an example. So let's consider an autonomous car. It's equipped with a sensor with a field of view illustrated by the circle segment. And in this example, it's driving along a road where there are parked vehicles on the side. For sensors used for autonomous vehicles, like camera and LIDAR, they're not capable of seeing through objects. And here we have highlighted this by coloring the occluded areas in orange. And we can see that there are two pedestrians to the right in the occluded area. However, on the left, there are actually no objects in the occluded area. So of course, this ground truth that there are two pedestrians in the occluded area on the right, this is not available to the tracking system in the autonomous car. So instead, it could use the Poisson point process for the undetected objects, specifically the intensity. And it could use this to represent the possibility that there could be undetected objects somewhere in the occluded areas. The PMBM density is defined as a convolution of a Poisson point process density for the undetected objects and a multi-Bernoulli mixture density for the detected objects, as shown here. As you can see, we use calligraphic P to denote the Poisson point process density. The Poisson point process density for the undetected objects typically has an intensity with a mixture representation, a weighted sum of densities. This means that the parameters for the undetected intensity is the set of weights and densities of this mixture. The multi-Bernoulli mixture density for the detected objects has the same parameters as we saw in the multi-Bernoulli mixture filter. We have log weights that correspond to the probability of the hypothesis, in other words, the probability of the data association sequence, and we have Bernoulli parameters for each hypothesis, or MB. The Poisson multi-Bernoulli mixture density is then parameterized by the Poisson point process intensity parameters and the multi-Bernoulli mixture parameters. And predicting and updating the PMBM density means to compute the predicted and updated parameters. For example, if we have a Gaussian mixture Poisson intensity, a Gaussian Bernoulli object densities, then the Poisson multi-Bernoulli mixture parameters are the weights, means, and covariances of the intensity, the log weights for each MB, and for each Bernoulli, the probability of existence, the mean mu, and the covariance P. Now we can use the Poisson multi-Bernoulli mixture density to design multi-object tracking algorithms called PMBM filters. A PMBM filter has four main parts. In each time step, we start with a prediction, then we have the base update, followed by a reduction step where we can do pruning, merging, and capping. And lastly, we have object estimation, where we extract a set of object estimates. And we will learn all about this in the next few videos. Great, that was the PMBM conjugate prior. Next, we will present the prediction and the update for the parameters of the PMBM density.